How many of you this morning have a song to tell, a story rather, with God praising God all the way, giving honor to Almighty God, and thanking the bishop for allowing me this privilege to stand behind the sacred desk one more time to tell you that the Lord is good and his mercy is from everlasting to everlasting. No doubt about it, we've come a mighty long way. We've been, we've been through dangers, seen and unseen. But out of all, the Lord has promised us to come through this day. And we thank him for that, giving honor to God once again. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight. O Lord, our strength and our redeemer. Amen. As you know, I won't be with you long, and uh, the uh, passage of scripture that I'm this I come about is well, well, it'll be short because I'm coming from the book of Haggai. Haggai, the first chapter and the seventh verse. Right. My God, well, my God. I'm using uh, uh, a different uh, interpretation this morning. Right. We're not coming from the King James Life Application Bible. And it, it reads, Thus says the Lord of hosts, Consider your ways. Mm. 
consider your ways. This book was written to the people living in Jerusalem and those who had returned from Israel. But first, let me ask you a question. How long has it been since you read this book? If it's been a long time, read it again. It's a small book and it's filled with challenges and promises reminding us to, of God's claim on our lives and our proprietors. It will only take a few minutes to read all 38 verses of the book and it's, it's only two chapters. Look for the word consider. It occurs four times, chapter one, five and seven, chapter two, 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 15 and 18. God was speaking to the Israelites who had returned from exile. He said in effect, think about it. You didn't have enough to eat. Your clothes didn't keep you warm. You're not prospering. I have commanded you to rebuild my house. When you obey, my blessings will return. This message applies to us as well. When everything seems to be going wrong, the first step of solving our problem may be to consider our ways. Things may not be going well with your, your wife or your husband. Think seriously about the situation. The problem may be not be with the other person but you. You are the problem. So change your attitude and your behavior. You will find things begin to get better. Not all of our troubles are our own making, but when difficulties arise, it's wise to consider our ways first. Let the people, of, like the people of Haggai's day, we may find that our disobedience is blocking God's blessings. Haggai had two points in this book, the call to rebuild the temple and encouraging the people to complete the temple. Having returned from captivity in 15 years, the temple had not been completed. They were more concerned about building their own homes than finishing God's work. So the prophet tells them to get their priorities straight. So many times we also put God on the back burner and go on to do our thing. God has prospered us and we seem to have no time for him. God is, has a blessing for us but will not give it because we fail to carry out what we ha he has said he would, we would, should do. The Bible says, bring me your tithes and offerings and try me. See if I won't open up the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing, but being disobedient, your blessings will not will be will be withheld. Some time ago, I was reading a book about and it said this about tithing. Tithing symbolizes and helps to express your commitment to Christ and to the church. God used two prophets, Haggai and Zechariah to get the people to rebuild the temple. The question was asked, is it time, is it then the right time for you to live in luxuries when the temple lies in ruins? Satan disguises himself if you read 2 Corinthians 11 and 3. As he disguises himself as he did in the garden of, with Eve. The serpent told Eve nothing would ha happen to her if she ate of the fruit from the tree. And you know the story and what happened. So be very careful. Keep prayed up. God will fight your battle if you will but obey. When they started rebuilding the temple, look what happened. God blessed them even before they finished building the temple. God said from this day will I bless you second chapter in the 19th verse. It is worthwhile to note the day which is referred to in this promise, there had been failure of crops, blasting, that is the crops had become blighted 
or shrivel up and mildew and all because the people sin. Now the Lord saw these chastened people commencing to obey his word and to build his temple. And therefore he says, from the day that the foundation of the Lord's temple was laid, consider this day, will I bless you. If we have lived in any sin and the spirit leads us to purge ourselves of it, we may look upon the blessings of the Lord, his smile, his spirit, his grace, his full of re revelation of his truth, will all prove to us an enlarged blessing. Consider how he brought you from. Consider how he fed you. Consider him being a friend that sticketh closer than a brother. Consider him as your doctor, lawyer, and companion. Consider his love, grace, and mercy. Consider the times you seem to have been lost and he rescued you. Amen. Consider the time he has healed you. Consider the times he has fed and clothed you. Consider the fact that he is a blessing and that he's blessing us right now. Have you considered your ways if not, get right with God and do it now. For when I think of God's goodness and all that he's done for me, my soul cries out hallelujah. Thank God for saving me. Consider your ways. Now if you are a Bible student and would like to, you can study further. Go to the book of uh, Ezra. And from the uh, fifth chapter, that was the five, six, and seventh chapter, Ezra talks about the plight of the Hebrews that who have uh, left uh, Babylon and come to uh, Jerusalem to rebuild the temple. He starts out that says, uh, during the reign of Nebuchadnezzar, the uh, city was rambled and that the temple was destroyed and that uh, the golden vessels that they used into the temple had been taken to Babylon. But when the uh, new king came on, Cyrus, he gave them permission to return to the to Jerusalem, rebuild the temple, and to take the golden vessels with him, with them, to, to put into the temple shoes. Not only that, he also said that he would help them to uh, in finances and things that was necessary during their rebuilding. But then there was trouble uh, later on. Uh, some of the, let's say, the governor and his assistant saw the people working on the temple say this isn't right you, you're not so supposed to be building the temple but and so he wrote to the king and told him what he had found and why they should not rebuild it but the king searched the archives and found the decree that uh, Cyrus had written wherein he had told them that it was okay to build a temple. He would uh, help them to do these things that was necessary. And when the king found that out, he wrote back to the governor, said, don't do this. We have to obey this, the will that Cyrus said to us. And so therefore, the, the uh, Israelites continue to build the temple, and it was completed. And after the completion of the temple, there was a rejoicing because they had the feast of the uh, Passover. So therefore, that's just a short uh, of, of the five, three, three chapters from Ezra. So, in your leisure, you uh, 
read the, that chapter and get a full understanding of, of what, what has been said. And the Lord says, consider your ways. God bless you.